Hello everyone, Lance here. So it's been a while since I made a World Blender tutorial. I've been uh, very busy with other projects and it, uh, it was the end of the year, so yeah. Uh, in any case, now that I have some more time on my hand, it's about time I make some more World Blender tutorial. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new Erosion node, the Erosion 2 node. So I've talked about the Erosion 2 node before, but uh, today I'm going to explain in more details about these parameters. So let's uh, bring these here and compare the two erosion node. Now the two erosion node looks kind of similar, but uh, the the algorithm underneath is uh, quite different. However, we still have some old features like the uh, rock break, the wind erosion, and the wear filtering. The wear filtering is actually the uh, wear expansion here. The difference now is that uh, you can turn off these features to make the erosion node run a little bit faster. And also now we have the dirt and the debris channels separated. Before the dirt and the debris are considered the same thing and in the same channel, the debris channel. But now we have two channels, the dirt and the debris. The dirt and debris kind of behave similarly. We have a similar uh, uh, parameters for the dirt and the debris, but uh, uh, they are different when it comes to erosion. So these are kind of like the old erosion nodes, so I'm not going to talk about these. Now, the main differences about this erosion node is uh, in these uh, top parameters. So unfortunately, this node does not calculate a uh, water map because uh, it no longer calculate the volume of water. I mean, it makes no sense to just stack the water of uh, today and the water of 1000 years ago. Like, the water from 1000 years ago was already gone, right? And now we have new water running on top. So it makes no sense to just add the water together, right? So basically this node kind of uh, simulate a long-term erosion over millions of years and uh, this old erosion node simulate a short-term erosion that uh, uh, the water kind of flow through the landscape and stack together and stuff. So basically these parameters are the overall erosive power of the climate rather than the water. But uh, yeah, in some senses, it still calculate the flow of water. So it produces a, a very believable flow map. Let me show you the flow map here. There we go. So you see this flow map is a lot more believable than the old erosion node. All right, so let's have a look at the parameters. First, we have the power multiplier. Basically, this multiplier will multiply these three erosion parameter, right? So let's increase this to 10 and see how it looks. There we go. So you see the the power of the climate is a lot stronger and it kind of removed all the rock and turned them into dirt. And uh, let's go to the shader editor and uh, do not normalize the channel and let's see the dirt. So now we have only the dirt and barely any rock still exposed to the air. So that's the effect of the power multiplier. Basically, it multiply these three parameters. The next parameter is the channel filtering. This parameter will forcefully blur out the flow every cycle. So basically, it's going to produce a lot smoother kind of uh, erosion. So let's see. Set this to 1, which is 100% uh, blur every cycle. So you see the blur was uh, blurred out every cycle and uh, basically the water is running all over the place instead of uh, finding the creases and flow into the creases. And let's see the flow. You see, it's a very blurry flow. So let me set this back down to zero so that we have no blurring whatsoever. Before we get to the dirt parameters, we have to have a look at the debris erosion and the rock erosion. Now, 
currently the rock breaking parameter is turned off so there is no debris but if we turn this on the rock will be uh, broken down by itself and um, it will produce a layer of debris so first let me turn off the modifier and uh, forcefully create some uh, additional debris set this uh, debris expansion to 5 so that we have a lot of debris and turn on the rock breaking and set this to 0 0.05 so the rock break down a lot all right so now let's have a look at the debris you see here we have some debris flowing down and stacking at the the foot of the mountain here and uh, let's see all right we have a bit of debris and the debris is sitting on top of uh, the rock so naturally it will protect the rock underneath and the water will have to erode the debris first before getting to the rock. All right, let's get back here. So the the water will erode the debris first using this debris erosion parameter, and then it will erode the rock using the rock erosion parameter. And the erosion of the debris and the rock will produce the dirt layer. And uh, the the dirt layer will sit on top of the debris and the rock to protect both the de debris and the rock underneath right so the dirt erosion parameter indicate how much the dirt being removed from the surface and put into the flow right once there is no dirt left the remaining power will erode the debris and the rock underneath so yeah let me just turn off the rock breaking so that we don't have any debris and we just focus on the rock and the dirt for now Okay, now we have no debris and the water will only deal with the rock and the dirt. So first, uh, let's increase the rock erosion to 10 and see how it looks. So you see the water is grinding the rock into dirt quite a lot. But uh, since the uh, dirt erosion is not very strong, the dirt kind of protects the rock underneath wherever there is uh, some dirt. Uh, the rock will not be eroded, so over time basically the exposed region of the rock will be smoothed out like that but if you want to have like a lot of cutting then you have to increase the dirt erosion so that the the dirt is removed from the rock and uh, let the rock erode more so let's increase this to 10 as well so you see the climate power is very strong at this point and it's completely destroyed the rock into dirt like that however you should be careful with this because right now th this is uh, not natural basically we are artificially increase the power of the climate so this is not a natural erosion and it can produce a lot of errors so if you want to erode the rock a lot I don't recommend using this method, but instead you just should just increase the uh, erode iteration so that the uh, simulation run for a longer period of time. But in any case, you can, in some cases, increase the dirt and the rock erosion to, to artificially uh, increase the erosive power without sacrificing uh, your time. The next parameter is the dirt damping parameter. So basically when the dirt is removed from the uh, the surface it will enter the flow and every cycle the dirt damping parameter will forcefully remove a certain amount of dirt from the flow and stick it back down to the surface and then the water will have to erode that dirt again if you set this to 1 then 100% of the dirt in the flow will be stuck back down to the surface and then the water will have to erode that dirt all over again so basically the dirt will just slide down one pixel at a time but if you set this to zero then the dirt will enter the flow and it will flow all the way down until it can't flow anymore and then the water will dump all that dirt in that single pixel which will create a spike and then the dirt will slide down from that spike to the surrounding area so let's increase the dirt damping to uh, 1 and see how it looks. Now you see we have a lot less dirt on at the bottom of the valley. 
but instead we have quite a lot more dirt on the slope of the mountain. So let's go back to the shader editor and uh, have a look. Now I think we should increase some some uh, erosive power so that we have a bit more dirt. So now you can see we have quite a bit of dirt sticking on a uh, high slope of the mountain. And let's have a look at the dirt channel itself so that we can see a lot better. So you see the dirt is uh, sticking on the slope like that instead of flowing down. And if we set the dirt damping to zero, then the dirt should flow all the way down to the bottom and uh, kind of stack underneath in the valleys like that. So let's set the uh, dirt damping to zero. Think, uh, because the dirt damping is set to zero, the dirt will not sticking on, to on the top of the mountain and we have a lot more erosion. And now we have way too much dirt. So we have to reduce the amount of dirt a bit. So you see, we don't have a lot of dirt sticking on top of the mountain to protect uh, the rock. So naturally, we have a lot of erosion and a lot more dirt. But you see, most of the dirt is now in the valleys. And you see, we have a lot of spike here because uh, the dirt kind of just stick in the flow until it can't flow down anymore. And it dump all that amount of dirt in a single pixel, which is uh, not correct. In this case, you might want to increase the rest iteration to something higher so that uh, the dirt will flow down naturally and uh, basically it will correct it itself. So let's try 128 cycles. There we go. So obviously you shouldn't have this set to zero or one. You should just set this to something in between like 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 it will produce a lot more natural looking dirt. The final parameter is the dirt loss over time. The dirt loss over time will basically just make the dirt disappear over time. I mean the dirt within the flow, right? Not the dirt that is resting on the mountain. So once the dirt is removed from the mountain and enter the flow, it will kind of disappear over time if it's not dumped back down on the surface. So if you set this to one, then every time the dirt is uh, picked up by the water, it will just disappear. So let's set this to one and see how it looks. So you see, we now have no dirt whatsoever because 100% of the dirt being picked up by the water just disappeared. So obviously you shouldn't use a very high value like one here. It should be just around 0 0.04 or something like that. And the dirt damping should be 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.03. And there we go. We have a lot uh, better looking mountain. And the dirt channel is very believable. Okay, let's turn on the rock breaking so that we have some debris. Okay. So you see, we now have a lot better looking rock compared to the old erosion note. The flow channel is uh, a lot better but unfortunately we now have no water channel if you want to have the water channel then you have to use the uh, hydro simulation here and uh, the hydro simulation node will basically override the flow channel so if you don't want to override the flow channel you should rename this to flow 2 or something and uh, put it in here and let's see So you see now we have a nice water channel, but uh, let's see the flow. The flow is uh, still the same, but if you want to access the flow two channel that was created uh, using the uh, hydro simulation node, you can create this uh, attribute node and call in the flow two. And let's see. So this is the uh, old uh, flow channel as in the erosion one node. And you can add the n flow to like this to see the normal the uh, these the equivalent of the n flow here. So this is the old flow, and this is the new flow channel. As you can see, the new flow is a lot better with a lot more details, and all of this is uh, on the same mesh with no additional 
geometry whatsoever. Basically, you just get free details. Okay, that's it for today. That's the the power of the new erosion node. I'll be making more tutorials on uh, different uh, features real soon. Okay, I'll see you next time.